Uh, good morning, Sir Dean. Today, me and my group mates are going to present on a topic called genetic engineering. We are going to kick off with the introduction presented by me and Kishore. The artificial manipulation and modification and recombination of DNA or other nucleic acid molecules to transform an organism or population of organisms is known as genetic engineering. The term genetic engineering refers to methods of recombination research. Gene manipulation, gene cloning, recombinant DNA technology, genetic alteration and new genetics are all phrases that can be used to describe genetic engineering. The genetic material of cells, organs or entire organisms can be identified, replicated, modified and transferred using these processes. Genetic engineering techniques have resulted in the invention of therapeutically essential goods such as human insulin, human growth hormones, and hepatitis B vaccination, as well as disease-resistant plants. Bacteria plasmid, also known as DNA ring, for example, is used to make insulin for diabetes. Now I'm going to pass over to Kishore to continue the introduction. Thank you, Lavnish. GMOs are creatures that have had their genetic material, which is the DNA, altered in a way that does not occur naturally through mating and or natural recombination. Modern biotechnology or gene technology as well as recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering are the terms used to describe this the technique. It enables the transfer of certain genes from one organism to another, including between species that are not related. A vector is a substance, usually a segment of DNA that conveys a DNA sequence or other genetic material from one cell to another. Vectors can be classified into numerous categories depending on the operations, purposes, and the sort of particle used in the procedure. Now I'll pass it on to Sridhar uh, to explain about the types of vectors used. Thank you, Kisho. I'll be now talking about types of vectors. The first vector is cloning vector which have plummets, bacterial artificial chromosomes, bacteriophage vector, and cosmics. The next is viral vector, which has DNA viral vector, RNA viral vector. Next, expression vector has prokaryotic expression vector, eukaryotic expression vector, and yeast and viral expression vector. Next, we have shuttle vector, which has transiently replicating shuttle vector, episomal shuttle vector, integrated shuttle vector, and finally, we have secretion vector. Now, I'll pass it on to the next member. Thank you. Thank you, Sri. So now I'll be talking about the discussion part. Um, vectors are carriers and transporters and will even be termed as vehicles for genetic material. DNA bodies accustomed transfer foreign genetic material to the cells are called vectors. Vectors are usually classified into four teams on the premise of their transmitting type and are, and are referred to as synthetic chromosomes, plasmids, viruses, and cosmids. The commonest of those vectors are viruses and plasmids. Vectors area unit transgenic DNA bodies contain two units. Larger units are the foundation and smaller units are foreign DNA. This foreign DNA is expressed within the cell wherever it is to be transmitted. However, before its expression, it undergoes severance, burgeoning, and finally expresses itself. Vectors will be transcript, translated, inserted, and expressed. The expression vector area unit is transcript and translated, not like the transcription vector area unit, solely transcript. Transcription vectors enlarge the foreign vectors. Now I'll pass it on to the next member to talk about the conclusion. Uh, now I'll be talking about conclusion. Conclusion is divided into three sections, which are important challenges and uh, suggestions. Genetic engineering can create an extended life. Genetic modification can help to create resistance to common forms of organism death. Pest resistance can be included into genetic profiles of plants so they can mature as a crop without any further additives. Animals can have their 
genetic profiles modified to reduce the risk of common health concerns that may affect the breed or species. This creates the potential for an extended lifespan for each organism. Uh, genetic engineering can also change the traits of plants or animals so that they produce greater yields per plant. More fruits can be produced per tree, which creates a greater food supply and more profits for a farmer. It also creates the potential for using modified organisms in a multiple ways because there is a greater yield available. Modified corn, for example, can be used for specific purposes such as animal feed, ethanol, or larger crops for human uh, consumptions. As for challenges, um, uh, many, many, comp uh, sorry, uh, and, uh, many about genetic engineering in humans is being used to treat specific disorders that uh, threaten the health or well being of individuals. In time, the approach in humans could be like what is already being done with plants and animals. Genetic engineering can change specific traits, which could create human outcomes that are ethically questionable and easily abused. Uh, many companies also copyright their genetic engineering processes or products to maintain their profitability. If a farmer plants genetically modified crops and the pollination process causes another farmer in the yield over to have those modified crops to grow. There, there have been precedents for legal actions against the unauthorized farmer. This can have severe or uh, several costly consequences uh, from fewer farmers wanting to work to a higher cost for the seeds that are planted. That's all from me, thank you.